Hello, everybody. My name is Beverly. I, uh, I want to share something with you guys. Something happened recently with um, getting a lot of emails. Um, notice of policy updates. I deleted the first few of them. And I, I don't know how long this has been going on over. I, I guess like the last week or two. Policy, notice of policy updates from, you know, every website I ever logged into, seems like. So everything from Instagram to some site, I don't know if you ever heard of the site, Coursera. And it's like a little, like an educational website where you can watch videos of college courses um, and that I haven't logged into in five years the other one um, Instagram it's probably been a year or two since I logged into Instagram and everything Google everywhere I've gotten these notices from Etsy everything so at first, I was just like, you know, what's going on with these people? It's kind of like um, you get these terms and conditions and policies and all that stuff. And you just want to use some simple website or use some simple function. And you got to read through. 30 pages of terms and conditions and they know that no one's reading through all of that but they're gonna you're gonna click and say that you read it understand and agree and they're gonna hold you to it that's that's legal is dead wrong but it's legal. And, and really, we shouldn't agree to that stuff. But they got it so interwoven into um, the fabric of things we need to do that you just kind of have to take your chances about these things. It, it's terrible, though. It's God awful. So whenever I see things about terms of policies and all that stuff, I get real suspicious, like all the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and, and I am just a very, um, maybe a naturally or from a very early age, a skeptical person. And thank goodness, because we live in an extremely deceptive world, okay? So I'm noticing all these policy updates from, you know, every X, Y, and Z company. So yesterday I decided to like see what is behind this. Uh, maybe some of you guys know if you watch the news or whatever, but I had no idea. And now I know that it has something to do with... Um, the little Mark Zuckerberg how he didn't he just like recently testify before Congress okay let's see what was all that about and there's something really weird with that dude something very weird with Mark Zuckerberg he is some kind of way. He is a um, a puppet. Some kind of way. This guy is very uncomfortable. Okay. So I'm going to read here from a site about his. And the other thing, you don't see him. Yeah, he's awkward. That's what he is. You don't see him um, in a suit very often. So this is what this is saying. 
What was this all about? Now, I have absolutely zero idea why was Mark Zuckerberg testifying before Congress. Interesting to note, as I look here at this picture of him, he is wearing that blue tie. He's wearing a blue tie, which I believe that when, when a lot of these people wear that color blue, it's just as though they were um, making devil horns or 666 with their hands. They're show, it's a sign to show that they are with the um, agenda, the global government agenda, the beast agenda. Uh, with You can also just call it um, Zionism, extreme Zionism. Anyway, if that doesn't make any sense to you, you'll have to watch some of my older videos. Um, so let's see, what was Mark Zuckerberg testifying before Congress about? Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee for hours on Tuesday. So this was uh, April 11th, I guess, with questions ranging from the social network's re regulations to its cooperation with the special counsel, Robert Mueller. Repeated questions from multiple senators and the collision between the chamber one of the most famous faces in Silicon Valley and collisions between the chamber and one of the most famous faces in Silicon Valley made for some awkward moments. Here are some of the highlights from Zuckerberg's Tuesday testimony. Um, when Senator Lindsey Graham asked Zuckerberg about Facebook's biggest competitor, Zuckerberg responded that Facebook has a lot of competitors. When pressed to name the primary one, however, the founders struggled to respond succinctly, leading Graham to ask if Facebook has a monopoly on the market. It certainly doesn't feel like that to me, Zuckerberg answered, drawing a few chuckles from the crowd. Orrin Hatch asking how Facebook makes money. Okay, at one point in his testimony, Zuckerberg said that a version of Facebook will always be free, causing some confusion about the site's business model for one senator. If so, how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service, asked Senator Orrin Hatch. Senator, we run ads, Zuckerberg responded after a lengthy pause. Then Patrick um, Leahy asked Zuckerberg if Facebook had been subpoenaed by special counsel Robert Mueller's office and if employees had been interviewed, Zuckerberg replied affirmatively to both, but noted that he had not been interviewed by Mueller's office. He quickly backtracked, however, saying that while Facebook is cooperating with the special counsel, it cannot be certain subpoenas have actually been, he cannot be certain that subpoenas have actually been issued. Senator Ted Cruz grilled Zuckerberg on a number of issues related to censorship and political bias, but things got a bit heated when he brought up Palmer, Palmer Lucky, an ex-employee who was involved in the pro-Donald Trump Nimble America. The pro-Donald Trump group Nimble America. When asked why Lucky was fired, Zuckerberg responded, That's a specific personal matter that it seems like it would be inappropriate to speak to here. Before adding when pressed that it was not because of a political view. To drive home a point about privacy, Senator Dick 
Durbin asked Zuckerberg whether he would be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night. Zuckerberg laughed, paused, then eventually responded, no. Durbin then asked Zuckerberg if Zuckerberg would share the identities of those he had messaged with recently. Then Zuckerberg again declined to do. Senator Dan Sullivan threw Zuckerberg a softball by alluding to the fact that his tech behemoth could only have been built in America. When Zuckerberg began to answer by praising Chinese internet companies, Sullivan laughed. You're supposed to say yes to the question. Okay, come on. I'm trying to help you. Give me a break. All right. Louisiana Senator John Kennedy challenged Facebook's current user agreement, saying it is established to cover Facebook's rear end and not as a way to inform people of their rights. He challenged Zuckerberg to rewrite it in English so that the average American can understand it. Your user agreement sucks. He said, okay, that seems to be the end of the article. All right. And that was in Fortune. And the title of it was um, Seven of the Most Awkward Moments from Mark Zuckerberg's Testimony to Congress. Okay. Now. Why was Zuckerberg testifying before Congress? What is Facebook being accused of? Ten hours they question this man by the Judiciary Committee. All right. All right. So the U.S. House Committee on the Judiciary, also called the House Judiciary Committee, but that was uh, House of Representatives. That was uh, senators. OK, so we have the Senate Judiciary Committee. All right. This is a government website. Committee on the Judiciary. In addition to its critical role in providing oversight of the Department of Justice and the agencies under the department's jurisdiction, including the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Department of Homeland Security. Oh, this is a hotbed of garbage here. The Judiciary Committee plays an important role in the consideration of nominations and pending legislations. That said nothing. Executive nominations for positions in the Department of Justice, Office of National Drug Control Policy, the United States Parole Commission, the United States Sentencing Commission, and the State Justice Institute, as well as select nominations for the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Commerce, are, re are referred to the Senate Judiciary Committee. The Judiciary Committee is also charged with the consideration of all Article III judicial nominations. These include Supreme Court nominations, Appellate Court nominations, and District Court nominations. The Committee also considers nominations to the Court of International Trade. In addition to its role conducting oversight and consideration of nominations, the Senate Judiciary Committee also considers legislations, legislation, resolutions, messages, petitions, memorials, and other matters as provided for in the standing rules of the Senate. These areas include appointment of representatives, bankruptcy, mutiny, espionage, and counterfeiting, civil liberties, constitutional amendments, federal courts, and judges, 
government information, holidays and celebrations, immigration and naturalization, interstate compacts generally, judicial proceedings, civil and criminal generally, court, local courts in territories and possessions, um, measures relating to claims against the United States, national penitentiaries, patent office, patent copyrights and trademarks, protection of trade and commerce against unlawful restraints and monopolies. Mm. That seems like where they're headed with this Zuckerberg thing. Revisions and codifications of the United of the statutes of the United States. State territorial boundary lines. Okay. So protection of trade and commerce against unlawful restraints and monopolies. So that's probably how they were questioning Zuckerberg. And now that something's coming back to me about um, Facebook being accused of um, influencing the 2016 presidential election. Okay, so that's what they were doing. Now, nothing productive ever happens in front of the, the Senate Judiciary Committee. Nothing. All they do is hold a public kangaroo court to um, pretend play like they are policing something. It just creates a big smoke screen, kicks up a bunch of dust um, to lead the people who are concerned about something on a wild goose chase while giving the people who are still trying to get away with their goose chase time to uh, hide the bodies and bury the guns and um, purge their computers and delete their emails. So just know whenever you see that stuff, there's just something they want you to see. They're just introducing something it's just always going to be a trick that's all I want you to know it's always going to be a trick it's just something they they want to just flash before the attention of the public so when you hear it see it again you'll you'll um you'll have some kernel in your brain you'll have oh that was resolved or that was found to be nothing or it must have been nothing because I didn't hear anything more about it blah 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 okay so I know Mark Zuckerberg appearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee has something to do with um, these emails about this, all these policy changes, every website having their policy changes. So yesterday, like I said, I decided, it was either yesterday or the day before yesterday, I decided, you know, let me, you know, click one of these links and see what are these people going on and on about, about these policy updates. So it says, Hello, Beverly. As part of our ongoing effort to provide the best service to learners, we will be updating some of our policies. Effective May 15th, 2018. That's today. Updated terms of use, privacy policies, and cookies policies will be in place on, Cor on Coursera. Please log in to your account today to review these policies. The purpose of these changes is to update our policies and procedures, which include bringing them in line with the General Data Protection Regulation. 
While most of these changes will only affect residents of the European Economic Area, the EEA, we encourage all learners to review the new policies and become familiar with them. For your convenience, here is a brief summary of the changes to each policy. We, will, we encourage you to review each one in full. Now, who in their right mind is going to waste time on all those emails that you no doubt have been receiving too to go and review these people's ridiculous, ridiculous. We should not even agree to use these websites that want us to agree sight unseen to whatever they say. And they know it's sight unseen because no one's going to read all this junk. It's all unlawful. So they've changed things on their terms of use, updated with references and links to the new cookies policy and further clarification on our refund policy. Privacy policies. The privacy policies have been updated to account for GDPR provisions. And remember that stood for General Data Protection Regulation. My God. We've also made these policies more transparent by providing specific details on our data processing activities. More garbage, garbage, garbage. They are saying absolutely nothing. <sighs> so now if you want to actually find out what they say, in addition to uh, a law degree, a huge bag of skepticism, and about 40 hours that you want to waste. Then you can find out what it is they're actually talking about. But let me try to break it down without us going through all of that. Because we don't have time for that. I'd rather read my Bible and let these people do whatever it is they're going to do. Okay. Anyway. So, when I saw that GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, I said... And Europe, what is things in Europe, you know, why are they talking about that with us? Why? Because they're trying to make this a global world. They want a global government. They want you, they want your nation to no longer exist. They want no nations to exist. They want to control the entire world under one umbrella. And they're well on their way to doing it. Okay. So I looked up this uh, general data protection regulation thing. So I just copied and pasted it into the search bar like I'm going to do now. And I'll read to you what came up. Okay. So I find things like, uh, huh, let's, let's start with Wikipedia. Good. God help us. Okay. All right. It says, the General Data Protection Regulation... GDPR, EU, European Union, that's what that stands for, is a regulation in EU law on data protection and privacy for all individuals within the European Union. It also addresses the export of personal data outside the EU. The GDPR aims primarily to give control to citizens or residents over their personal data and to simplify the regulatory environment for the for international business by unifying the regulation within the EU. Okay. It was adopted on April 14th, 2016 after a 2-year uh, transition period becomes enforceable on May 25th uh 2018 the gdpr replaces the 1995 data protection directive because the gdpr is a regulation not a directive it does not require national governments to pass any enabling legislation and is directly binding and applicable Okay, that was basically like 
five or six sentences that just changed your life. Okay. Please be patient and listen to this. And I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. But when you're dealing with sneaky, crafty, demonic deceivers and you want what they're doing to be really obvious, to stand out at you, and you don't want to have any patience to see what they're doing, you're always going to be deceived. You're always going to be deceived because that's what subtlety is. That's what craftiness is. That's what deception is. It's hidden. That's what the occult is. That's what these people are. If, if you're looking for everyone who participates in um, serving Satan to be uh, drawing circles and pentagrams and lighting candles and, and uh, killing chickens, that's not the way it works. It's just deceptiveness. It's just manipulation. It's all those other things, too, for people who choose to participate in all that stuff. But you can wear a button-down suit. You can be a wife in your kitchen and, and be using witchcraft. Manipulate your husband. Manipulate your children. So please be patient while we search these things out. Because I'm heading somewhere and I don't want to take a whole long time to get there because I don't want to lose you. OK, the general protection, the general data protection regulation. This is just like those things, the TTP and NAFTA and NATO and all those, uh, you know, four letter um, little buzzwords that they slip in here and there on us while they build this global prison for us all. So look at this thing, because this is the final thing. This right here. And I'm going to put a link to a dream that I had back in 2015. And as soon as I clicked on this and began to read what this thing was about, I knew that that was that dream. So I'm going to read that again. The General Data Protection Regulation, European Union 2016, is a regulation in the EU law, in EU law on data protection. So that's what it's on, data protection. And privacy for all individuals within the European Union. It also addresses the export of personal data outside the EU. Okay. So even though this was a law passed outside of our country, it says that it also addresses the export of personal data outside the EU. Okay. So any companies, American companies or companies that operate in America, this is how they're, this is how they're going around National sovereignty. That is the right of a nation to exist and to make its own laws and to be free of outside interference. So they're going to break all this down and we're going to have a global government. Um, so if they're saying it also addresses the export of personal, personal data outside of the EU, now what they're saying is because you are a company and you operate on the internet, which is worldwide, if you're dealing with any data from people who live within our lo locality, now we're making a law that's going to govern you outside of our borders because the data is moving outside the borders. It's just a tricky, sneaky way that's gonna blow up the is gonna blow up the walls between all nations. It's, they've already done it in our minds. They've already taken down the wall in your mind that the United States is a nation that exists, one nation, one nation under God. Whichever God 
different people happen to be talking about because clearly they weren't all worshiping our God. So this law was made in April of 2016. Coincidentally, the year that Barack Obama, the Antichrist, turns over the Internet. Okay, let's see if we can. Wow. Here's first thing that popped up. I'll just read this seven days before. Uh, okay, well, we can't use that because they don't appreciate my ad block. Um, Obama gives the Internet away. Okay. Okay. Oh, my God. I can't stand looking at that man. Okay. Good grief. Okay. It says, it's no great shock that President Obama does not like American control of the Internet. The Internet was an American invention and American America shared it with the world. American values of freedom and liberty created the Internet and allowed it to flourish. Now... In one of his last acts, Obama wants to destroy the Internet. Of course, you know, clearly this this uh, website has a. Um, a bias. No, this is not one of those crazy Internet conspiracy theories. Uh, despite the explicit wishes of Congress, Mr. Obama wants to allow an international body to take control of the Internet. An international body. Global. The, the first dream I had about Obama back in 2014, he said, "I'm going in seven days, I'm going to blow this place up. He meant he was going to destroy the United States. He spent his presidency putting things in place to destroy the United States because the United States was in the way of global government. Okay. Okay, the United States still controls something called the International Assigned Numbers Authority. Where's the rest of this? for uh, the allocation of unique names and numbers that are used around the world in internet protocols. All right, looks like, um, in short, it controls the allocation of domain names from facebook.com to your church's website. And Mr. Obama wants to give control of this to an international organization. If the internet is to a certain extent running the world, then, and you turn that over to something outside of the United States, how do you have the best interests of the United States in mind? Since the internet became a worldwide phenomenon, represented, uh, repressive regimes have looked for ways to censor the internet. China has what is known as the Great Firewall of China to keep out materials that the government does not like. Uh, when there is unrest in countries, one of the first things dictators do is to shut down the Internet. Without America and American values controlling the Internet, who will control it and what will they do? This is what they're going to do. Um... Here's these names again. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. Uh, uh, Representative Sean Duffy of Wisconsin have introduced legislation that will prohibit the Commerce Department from allowing those contracts to expire. But th this is an old article, obviously, and the Internet did move into international hands. The Internet is not controlled in the United States anymore. All right. So... During this time, I remember people, oh man, I cannot bear looking at Obama's face. 
During this time, back in 2016, when they were getting ready to turn the internet over, you might have just heard a little bit about it, but it didn't seem like any big deal. Nothing in your life really changed. You went on, you put in your little uh, Google search or your uh, whatever search engine you use, and whatever you were looking for popped up, and happy little fingers kept going. Shopping continues, searching on Facebook, whatever you're doing continues as usual, only for a time. So now we see the rest of the pieces coming in place with this general data protection regulation. So they say that the GDPR aims primarily to give, con give control. It aims primarily all garbage words, lies, to give control to citizens and residents over their personal data. Now, what dictator that wants to rule the world is going to give citizens control and residents over their personal data? Everything that's happening in this world is destroying our personal privacy. They are distributing our personal data. To use to further exploit people and to completely exploit people. The um, internet, it truly is a net. It truly is a world wide web because it has fashioned a way to put everyone's data into this virtual world. And it's just as if they have you in that net by having all your information. Because they, they're turning this into a virtual world, a virtual world of technology. And the more technology you participate in, and the less you have a grip on the real world, the more you no longer exist and only your mind exists connected to this artificial intelligence. And it's real. It's true. I recently had a dream or I don't know what it was, if it was a dream or if it was in prayer or whatever it was. I think it was a dream um, that technology was the replacement for spirituality. If you are familiar with what it is like to walk in the spirit, to have the world shut out and to... Have, not have the love of the world in you, but to have your mind where you're meditating on God, meditating on his word, meditating on the things of God. You know, you're in a regular habit of fasting and prayer and the spirit has control of your mind. The spirit has act. The spirit of God has access to your mind and you walk in the spirit. It just refers to where your mind is at. Technology is the flip side of that. For you to see yourself as a collection of passwords where your wealth does not exist in something tangible that you can hold anymore, but it just exists in the numbers that you can either look up on your phone or you can look on your computer and see your bank statements. We, we don't even get bank statements anymore. You know, being in your car, having the keys to it, driving it, that, that doesn't confer ownership anymore. 
You know what ownership is? A piece of paper that you have to get from your state that says that's your car. So instead of the real object, which, which is the car, and the person that possesses it, what matters is that piece of paper. And no doubt those pieces of paper will go away and they'll only exist on a computer. Because if you don't have your registration on you, the police behind you, right behind you in your car, they have technology that can scan your license plate, your back license plate while they're following you. And they can do multiple cars at the same time. It can scan your license plate and pull up whether your car is registered with the state, who it's registered to, whether you're current uh, with your registration, all that. So even the piece of paper doesn't exist. You, you, they are trying to, uh, to uh, distill human beings down to a collection of information that they can put into something smaller than this, put it inside people's right hand, and have this decide whether you exist or not. And first they have to get us to accept the virtual world. They have been building it for years. Building it for years. I think the people's, at least my first introduction to the computer was through school. They had to get everybody back in school. Um, having you look up things. Oh, you got to have five internet, uh, internet sources for your paper. Or um, we're only going to com communicate with email. You got to get on Blackboard. You got to check your grades online, and now everything is online. And then this 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 world that doesn't exist now exists, and it's the world and the realm of technology, rather than the realm of the spirit, which is where we're supposed to be trying to keep ourselves. And in between those two worlds is the physical world. Now, me, I'm getting leery of all technology. People who do not take the mark of the beast will be cut off from all technology. And you will be cut off from all of the advantages that using technology will confer. And I put that in quotes because technology is not giving us any advantages. It is destroying us. It is capturing us in just what it says, a world wide web. Now they're saying that this, this law, which is not even an American law. So why are companies in America responding to Americans talking about this law and changing their policies? Because through the internet, the walls of nations no longer exist. There is going to be a one world government. People who are fighting that and telling you to resist and do all this stuff. Those people are deceived. They don't believe God. They don't, they're not in touch with him. Because he's, he's saying that it's time. 
So, it says it aims to give control to citizens. We know that's a lie. They're never doing that. They don't care a hoot about you. And then here's the big thing. And to simplify the regulatory environment for international business by unifying the regulations within the EU. Now, they said a whole bunch of stuff right there. And they said a whole lot of $2 words. Let's break it down. Unifying the regulation. Passing more powerful and um, direct laws where they can control things better. That's all that's doing. Unifying the regulation. Strengthening their fist to control the internet. That's all that means. The regulatory environment. To simplify the regulatory environment. There's going to be simply one law. We control the internet. That's what it's about. Forget your privacy. Forget that garbage. That's a big lie. That's a great big lie. The only person, you can't protect your privacy. You know, uh, God showed me in back in 2016, there was a... There was some kind of barrier and someone was standing in front of it trying to protect it. And it was very important that it stay protected. And that was our privacy. But they couldn't protect it. There was absolutely no way. There, there, there will be no privacy. These people will conquer. All right. So. What are they on? What What is the Senate Judiciary Committee doing with Mark Zuckerberg? Uh, they're, they're, they're trying to paint Facebook and other big companies like that. They use your personal information as your enemies. And they are. They are using your information to exploit you. But... The people who claim that they're coming in to protect you from these big, bad corporations. And these corporations want your money. But this world government wants your soul. So they're going to come and tell you, you know, the big, bad wolf, Facebook and um, Google and I don't know who else. All these little... Even little mom and pop stores, even down to your churches that keep information about who visits their website or has your emails and all that stuff. They are catching these people up into this. It's going to be another way to burden people with regulation. There are massive fines that go along with not um, massive fines that could put a little small business out of business that go along with not meeting these regulations. This is all about total control of the Internet. This is all about the ability to completely and legally through uh, the legislative and regulatory process to completely censor and control the internet. And they're going to get people so busy trying to keep these regulators and these fines and stuff off their backs that they, um, they'll forget all about their privacy. They'll forget all about, they'll, they'll lose sight of what is the big picture of this uh, law aimed at. A very similar law was passed. And it used the pretense, just like this, of protecting your information. 
your privacy. And that same law was used to put the final destructive clamp down on health care. And that is a law also with a bunch of letters. HIPAA. Oh, HIPAA is for your privacy. And it was all just a trick to centralize control of personal data, information, and also to control uh, people who deliver health care to bully, harass, scare, control them so that they won't put up any flack or even notice what the overarching thing was. And that was that they were going to take over health care. Because it needs to be the um, distribution vehicle of the microchip, RFID chip. Because all those people who are not willing to, you know, just do it just because... You know, they want to play a cute trick and, and open up their car doors with it or pay for Taco Bell with it. But what about if your child gets lost? What about if grandma wanders away from the nursing home? Why is your grandma in a nursing home? You worried about your grandma? Take her in. Nope, we're too busy out making money to do that. But it's okay, because grandma had you in daycare so she could go make money. See how it all just goes around in a circle? The devil has this world. So um, there'll be people who are willing. And you, what, if you, what if you collapse on vacation somewhere and no one knows any of your health information? No one knows that you're a diabetic. No one knows that you had a heart attack in 2013. But through the miracle of modern technology, the new spirit world, they can just scan your hand and up pops all the medications that you're on and everything. And boy, your life is saved. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have my creator who created this body that I can call on and tell him what's wrong with it. Or I could better yet listen to him so he can help me take care of it. So I don't need them. And when it's time for this dust to return to dust, to willingly go to the Father, instead of them, through their religion, technology, trying to live forever. They want modern medicine to provide them the eternal life that they seek. I heard somebody talking the other day. I want to be frozen. When I die, I want to be frozen. You know why? They think they can hold back death. And then if they just keep participating in this system, that's going to somehow be possible. Okay, let's read a little bit more about this sinister, depraved law. It says, because the GDPR is a regulation, not a directive, it does not require national governments to pass any enabling legislation and is directly binding and applicable. No government has to pass any laws in order for this to apply to them. This is why you're seeing these changes in the United States. And I believe that there will possibly be a, um, a similar law here in the United States. Or maybe they'll just ride on the coattails of this because they know how Americans are. 
They're going to pop up talking about don't tread on me. And it's just more trouble than it's worth. So they can go around all that by just doing this. I don't know. Okay. So the GDPR extends the scope of uh, European Union data protection law to all foreign companies processing data of any European residents. It provides for harmonization of the data protection regulations throughout the EU. Centralized control, that's all they're saying. Thereby making it easier for non-European companies to comply with these regulations. However, this comes at a cost of strict data protection compliance regime with severe penalties of up to 4% of worldwide turnover or 20 million euros, whichever is higher. Okay, listen to the here's the trick for you. Here's the trick to suck in the suckers. The GDPR also brings a new set of digital rights for the EU citizens in an age of increase in an age of an increase of the economic value of personal data in the digital economy. So all they're doing is saying the government wants to have control, the global government wants to have control over the power that's in your digital data. The data that the information that exists about you in digital form saved in these technologies, whereby they can predict all your behavior. Control what you do, what you don't do, where you go, where you can go, and put it all in something like this for which you will have to sell your soul. A single set of rules will apply to all EU member states. So now... Companies are scrambling. That's why they're sending out these emails and revamping their um, policies, privacy policies and cookies and the way they deal with your personal information because they, they have to get in compliance with these laws so that they can avoid these tremendous fines. Now, they're not looking at the potential of where these rules and laws are headed. They're not looking at that. Because these things come with such high economic threats of personal liability, financial liability, big trouble. These people are not focused on um, the dangers of this, the implications of this. Because as soon as you throw in threats and, you know, scare tactics and all that kind of stuff, people revert down to a low they're not thinking about that high lofty stuff like my privacy. They're thinking about my pocket. Same thing happened with HIPAA, as I said. I used to be in healthcare. And right around the time that I got into healthcare, there started being talk of um, HIPAA. Again, big sweeping legislation. That hit, they passed it, and then they let some time go by before it was fully implemented because that's what they like to do. That's why they have these, these uh, committee, you know, they bring the Zuckerbergs in front of the, the you know, the, the Senate and all that stuff, and then they talk a whole bunch of garbage, and then... By that time, everybody's kind of used to it and tired of it and 
the hype fades away, and then they're just able to just meld their plans into whatever they're trying to do. So this is HIPAA. It says uh, health insurance, health insurance, portability, and accountability act of 1996 is the United States legislation that provides data privacy. Now, this is an old article. And security provisions for safeguarding medical information. Safeguard, and that's all it was about. We're going to safeguard your medical information. But this law right here was the infrastructure for Obamacare. Obamacare could not have happened unless they did this law. Unless they had this law. And... Um, I believe this was passed under Clinton. Okay. The law has emerged into greater prominence in recent years with the proliferation of health data breaches. Now, the same stuff. You remember uh, Target had that huge breach and... Um, the TJ Maxx companies had a huge breach of their data and they got to send out all these notifications, what we're doing to protect your data. Your personal information may have been exposed. You know, they do all that stuff and they get you into thinking that, oh, you, you need to just take these extreme measures and, and you need our protection and, and you need to get on board with what we're trying to do. They're telling you that the big bad wolf is after you, your personal identification, your money. And really, they're just feeding you a scapegoat because it's them that want you. Look, you need us to protect you from this uh, saber toothed tiger that's on the loose. And, and meanwhile, they're going to use a nuclear bomb to catch him because they're the ones that are really after you. And they're after something a lot deeper than your money. So they got us to go along with this saying, oh, look, uh, here, sign this. We're going to read you about HIPAA. Now, 10 years ago, no one knew what that was. But now everybody knows what that is. How has it changed your life? Not in any good way that you can think of. They said, oh, it's going to keep... Insurance companies, this was the big thing, is going to keep insurance companies from being able to um, have clauses against pre-existing conditions. Oh, that sounded like a good thing to everybody, especially if we had a pre-existing condition. But now, let's see, did it help us? Let's look. Let's check. Now we have deductibles for our insurance. It used to be you went to the hospital, your insurance just paid for it, whatever it was. You paid your insurance premium or your job paid your insurance premium and your insurance paid your hospital bill. That was the way that was supposed to work. Now we have, they had to invent new words, co-pays. They had to apply words from other industries into what we have, deductibles. Now, we were used to something like that with our car insurance. I don't know when they brought that in, but we were used to that with car insurance. But not with health insurance. No deductibles. Now, if you had a good policy, no. I never heard of it before a few years ago. They just paid stuff. Your insurance card. You, you people have been already paid with my premium. So now what difference does it make if they're covering pre-existing conditions, if they still have you paying 25, 30% of your bills? Or some people with a deductible so high they never reach it because they just have to have this insurance that won't cover anything of any importance because their deductibles are so high. Because that's the only policy they can afford. And they only got it to keep Obama from charging them, you know, $2,000 in their next tax bill. 
That's real. You, they have to go out and buy worthless insurance to keep from getting a bill on their taxes for not having insurance. How are you helping me exactly? They got everybody used to thinking health insurance was a good thing. Where you pay your premium, or your employer pays your premium, and the insurance pays your health care bill. But instead, health care has turned into a, a literal monster of its own. And HIPAA was one of those tricks. Just like this GDPR thing. And to get you to swallow it up, they say, we're doing it all for you. We're protecting your data. And all they're doing is making a scaffold of laws for some later plan that they have to be hung on. For HIPAA, it was Obamacare. And I had a dream, I don't know, some months ago about, um, about that very thing, about HIPAA and Obamacare. If I can find it, I'll make a video about it. And how do they scare everybody? Oh, there's so many fines. You, you, if you're a healthcare worker, you can personally be fined. Personally be fined. Up to $50,000 and spend time in jail. You personally. For breaking the regulations in that law. And that includes things like you're taking care of a patient in a hospital. You're the doctor. You walk in and um, you're going to update the patient about their test results. And you happen to speak to this patient in front of some family members that maybe they didn't want them to know they had herpes. Or in my field, what, what it would be, yeah, it would be herpes a lot. Like these, these ladies who um, grandma and grandpa and their parents would come to visit the baby that was in the hospital. And uh, Susie didn't want her parents to know she had herpes. Or, um, well, why is the baby in the hospital? We, had a, we got a lot of that. Grandparents coming in. Why is the baby in the hospital? I just don't understand what's wrong with the baby. Why is he crying so much? Because your daughter's abusing Percocets and your grandson is addicted to them. She's, she, she takes way more Oxycontin than her doctor actually prescribed to her. So things like that. That's, that's, that was the carrot for people. Oh, we're going we're gonna to help you hide all your dirt and sins from your family. But really, all they wanted to do was gain legislative governmental control over a private sector of our society, which was the delivery of medical services. Now, the government is so knee deep in, quote unquote, medical services. That they actually pass a law that you have to acquire insurance for medical services. They actually have a law that you have to vaccinate your children for them to go to school. Same thing with schools. They started offering education. Then mandating education. And now the government is in every area of our life. Every area. Through the tool of technology. They have become the, they want to become the new spirit realm. They want you to forget about the true spirit realm where the where the god of spirits lives jehovah yahweh 
the Lord our God, God Almighty. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to put a link in the description box to the dream that I had in 2015. I believe it was July 9th. It's called, it's called Warning. The Beast is Coming Very Soon. One World Government to Take Over. And it was published on July 9th, 2015. My God, my God, my God. I want you to listen to that video. It is only 10 minutes long. And I'm telling a dream in this video about how I received emails on my computer talking about personal privacy, private information, money, and we had to, there was some emergency thing where we had to click on this thing and follow these links. And as soon as we did it, when that happened, the one more one world government took over. And then the next thing that happened was I saw the UN. But then I said it wasn't the UN because it was more powerful than the UN. It was the UN, but it wasn't the UN because it was way more powerful than the UN. And the symbol of it was the gay pride flag. So this is long enough. And I know that that was um, some subtleties, some shades of gray. I pray that I was able to make it clear and I pray that this will go out and uh, God will uh, open up your eyes and minds and understanding to to see what I was trying to say because the things that they, they are doing, they're obvious if you're looking, but they're subtle enough that if you're the slightest bit groggy, it'll come in on you. And if you're just flat out living for the devil, you'll desire it. You'll desire all these things. It's just a 10 minute video. And it is about what they're doing right now. It is about these updates to this, these privacy policies. There, I don't believe there's any way 2018 will go forth without Um, the global government being in place and the mark of the beast being introduced. So I could read you some scriptures. I think I'll just put some links to some scriptures in the description box because this video is super long. I'll just say some scriptures. The, the Bible says in Daniel that there will come up a fourth kingdom that will trample the world to pieces. And it'll be like any other government that ever has been with a grip like no other. And that's this government that's coming. John, the revelator, talked about it. The beast with seven heads and ten horns. And now he's going to rule the whole world and cause that everybody would take a mark. There is a provision in Obamacare for, for implantable devices such as the microchip. That, that law, Obamacare is a law, will have regulatory power over it and that's all this general data protection regulation and that's all HIPAA and that's all Obamacare are regulations power in written laws that they put in place and they slip them in there trying to act like they're doing something for your good let me just at least read Revelation chapter 13 And I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast 
rise up out of the sea. Now remember, beast is a kingdom. Having seven heads and ten horns. And upon, now forget, don't be thinking of no creature. Because this is a government. This is a, a practical matter right here. And upon his horns, ten crowns. Those are ten kings. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. These things would be against God. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and his great authority. So that's just letting you know that there are many nations involved in this, these descriptions of these different creatures. And the dragon that gave him his power, that's saying that this is satanic. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped the beast saying who is like unto the beast and who is able to make war with him. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. In addition to being a kingdom, a government, the last government, the last man-made government, worldly government. The beast is also one man, known as the Antichrist, the man of sin. And he opened his mouth in blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And you saw up in verse 5 where it said, power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. The last three and a half years of this world, of time in this world, will be spent with this beast in control. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. You'll be a part of this system. And if you have no idea what's going on, you better get to seeking God for yourself. Put away sin out of your life. Sin is blinding. Sin digs out your spiritual eyes. And you'll be the blind being led by the blind. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. To know that though we'll be going through all these things, those people that are going to be putting us through these things are going to be dealt with by God in the end. So we must have patience. And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and caused it that the earth and them that which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now this second beast that rises up out of the earth is the Pope Francis. It says, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred Three score and six, 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 six. God bless you.